The musical notes used in Music in Color are written in colored numbers. Some of these numbers are circled. So when you read a colored number, all you have to do is find the key with the same color and number on your piano or keyboard and play it. As an example, let's play the number one yellow, middle C. Now let's play the circled one yellow. Every song is divided into fractions, called measures. A measure is a unit of time in music representing a regular grouping of beats. In Music in Color, we represent each measure with a geometric figure, the more common ones being a square and a triangle. A measure used in Music in Color is divided by each side of the figure, and each side represents a beat. The square has four beats per measure, and the triangle has three beats per measure. Let's try playing three measures of four beats. Now let's play three measures of three beats. In written music, there are notes and rests. Here we show you the symbol for a rest, which is represented by an asterisk or a star. In this example, we'll play the number one yellow on the first beat. On beats two, three, and four, we have a symbol for a rest, so we don't play any notes. In this second example, we'll play the number one yellow on the first beat, a rest on the second beat, one yellow on the third, and a rest again on the fourth beat. Example one. Here we can see how each beat or side can be divided into two or more parts. In this way, we can create different values for each note. On this measure, we divide each beat or side into two parts, so you play two notes for each beat. The beats are divided with lines. Let's see an example. We can also have notes that are longer than a single beat. Here you can see how we connect the same note going from beat to beat with a curved line. Let's see some examples. In this example, we play one yellow for the first three beats and a rest on the fourth beat. Example two. Now we will play five yellow for beats one and two and a rest on the third and fourth beats. Example one. Example two. When two or more notes are on the same beat or side without a line to divide them, you play them at the same time. In this measure, we play five and seven green on the first beat. On the second beat, six green and one yellow. 
and on the third and fourth beat, we have rest. The notes on the outside of the figures are played with your right hand. The notes inside the figure are played with your left hand. Read the measures starting at the top of the figure and follow the notes counterclockwise. As you're starting out, we recommend playing the first four measures or figures and then memorize the song little by little. Try learning a whole song by memorizing four measures at a time. You will gain dexterity with your fingers and become better acquainted with your keyboard and piano. Inside the book, you will see that beside every song title is the author name or names. There is also information about the song such as the time signature which is used to specify how many beats are in each measure and which note value constitutes one beat. We also show you in what key the song is written. In this example, it is C, or number one, Do. The CD included with the book is for your own use if you wish to hear what some of the songs sound like. Songs included in the CD are indicated in the book with a picture of a CD and a number which is the same as the CD track number. Once you listen to the CD, you will also be able to compare your own playing. Let's try playing eight measures of the song Ode to Joy. First, practice playing only with your right hand. Then practice with your left hand by itself. Once you feel comfortable playing independently with each hand, try playing with both hands at the same time. Let's try playing the first four measures. In the melody for this song, which is the notes on the outside of the figure, you will notice on the fourth measure we extend the note two yellow for beats two, three, and four. This song is originally written differently. We wrote it this way so you can learn to play what we're reading in the book rather than just from the book. Let's try playing all eight measures with the right hand. Now let's try the same eight measures with the left hand. Now let's try with both hands. Let's play the first four measures or skip to my loop with the right hand. Now, let's play the first four measures with both hands. With your left hand, you will play the notes one and five blue over eight beats or two squares. Make sure you play the notes for the left hand, one and five blue, at the same time as the right hand, three yellow. Try 
practicing measures seven and eight separately from the rest of the song. These two are a little more difficult than the rest of the song. In the song, Waltzing Matilda, we include circled numbers or black keys. Let's try playing the first measure. For the song La Cucaracha on page 13 of the book, we include additional information on some of the note values on page 123. If you wish, you can study and practice these. Or you can try to get a feel for the beat. On the first measure of the song La Cucaracha, begin by counting two and a half minutes. So you'll begin to play the five yellow on the second half of the third measure. Let's play the first two measures. On the third beat of the song, Rock of Ages, we use a different way to divide. See the picture on page 15. Let's play the first two measures. Starting on page 87 of the book, we show you some of the musical scales. We recommend practicing these with the correct finger positions. Notice how the thumb passes onto the next key under the other finger. And on the way back, the middle finger goes over the thumb. That is, in transitioning from note to note, there should be no intervening silence. Staccato. This indicates that notes are separated in a detached and distinctly separate manner, or short and separated, with silence making up the latter part of time allocated to each note. Legato. Stagato. These next symbols are for dynamics. In music, dynamics normally refers to the volume of a sound or note. Pianissimo, piano, mezzo piano, mezzo forte, forte, fortissimo. Crescendo, this indicates to play gradually more loudly. Decrescendo, this indicates to play gradually more softly. other symbols used in music starting on page 119 of this book. Most of these are the same as used in the standard notation. An example of these symbols is the arpeggio from page 81. Here the notes are played or sung in sequence, one after the other, rather than ringing out simultaneously. This is what an arpeggio sounds like. symbol. This is represented by a line under the number. When you see this, it indicates that these are notes to be played again, even though there are other notes that will be held. Another example is the glissando. This is a glide from one pitch to another. You can adjust 
adjust your fingers if you feel more comfortable to play certain chords. Here we show you an example. Repetition bars and examples. Page 28 has symbols of repetition. Let's see how they work. First, play the song up to the sixth measure. Next, go back to the beginning of the song and play it all the way to the end of the song. Then, go back to the seventh measure and play to the end again. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoy many years of playing music.